Hey folks. So now it's time to use the configurator to update the firmware on my other uh, verbal device, which currently I'm using, which is the new CM2 base with the CM2 grip. So load up the software. As you can see, it's showing there's a mismatch between them because the previous version of the uh, firmware is on the uh, connected device. So first thing to do, as before, go to the firmware tab. Make sure it's pointing at the correct file. If you've installed multiple versions, this may be an issue. If you have not, just check to make sure it's pointing at where you currently installed it to. If you have more than one copy installed, uh, they all actually share the same configuration file, so this could be incorrect. And as before, just click the Start Firmware Update. Gives you a little warning message. And that's the first part done. If that's successful, you should see up here a uh, VPC device new profile because we haven't actually configured the device to uh, tell it what type of device it is. All right, on to step two now. We just have to basically set the device to what it is. There are multiple combinations of devices as regards like grips and bases, so you have to kind of set this up. That's your sort of step two. So click on profile. And then we go to the base. You have multiple options here. Um, currently mine is a CM2, it's the new one. And then the grip. And there's multiple combinations here. You can see all the available grips that will work with that are selected, including the, the recent new updates, which is the VX um, for F14 one. And we now have the Warthog and the F18 one have a common profile looks between them. So click whatever one of these matches with your current uh, configuration. For me, it's the new one. I've got the CM2. And the last thing to do is click which type it is, because there is, there are, should I say, left-handed versions of some of the verbal kits. So just click on right. These ones here don't really have any use for anything other than uh, keeping your current calibration, which I'm not going to do because I'm going to do this as out-of-box experience. And the joysticks as such, or the grips, do not actually have more than 32 buttons, so that's not really an issue. So then click Create Profile. You can see it fills in this stuff. And then to actually set the profile on the device, click this button here. I've noticed a few times now this sometimes doesn't click first time. No, it does, does now, of course. And that's a profile setup. Uh, just a quick note here um, for those who may be using dual stick setups. Uh, so say for example you have two warbirds and you've got the uh, two deltas on them. Just make sure when you're setting each of them up that whenever you set the profile up and you go either left or right, create profile and then save it back to the device. Just make sure that this number here, which is the PID, is not the same on both your sticks. It could cause an issue. Um, if you set one up and unplug it, uh, and then you set the other one up, for example, you do your left, and then you note down that that's 245, and then do your right, and that also comes up as 245, then you might want to change that number uh, before you save it back to Windows. The other thing is that some people are complaining that their devices come up in different orders, in which case it affects the, um, the games you're trying to configure. One way you can do this is by adjusting this. You could set one of the sticks for like two seconds and one of them, for example, for four. And that way there, the first stick you set for two seconds will always appear to Windows before the um, the second one. And that should hopefully sort out any problems you might have with device order getting swapped around. Those are just a couple of wee notes I've picked up from talking to people online.
Okay, we've got our profile set up. Now let's go and deal with the last thing we need to do, which is the axis. So go into the axis tab and then go calibrate axes. Now what you want to do is you want to move all the axes, that is the uh, forward, backward, left and right on the stick and also grip the um, brick lever. So I usually just go forward, backwards fully and then go diagonally to each corner, top left, top right, bottom right, bottom left into the center and then do a few full squeezes on the grip to make the brick lever move. And then click Save Calibration. And then on the main screen, Save VPC Device. And that's that done. Just going to do one more thing here. Uh, while the, the profile has been configured, the device has been set up and I'm kind of happy with things, the calibration's all done. I'm just going to take a backup of the current configuration. So go to profile. And then load just to make sure it's got the current configuration in the program. And then go export. And I'm going to go to where I keep my backups. So, uh, naming conventions up to you. I'm going to use the build of the software and what it is. So it's 23rd of the 7th. And it's a CM2 grip. I'm just going to save that. Uh, now I can play around with the configuration and if anything goes wrong, I can always just load that back in using the import and then save it back to the device. So I'm just going to show you a couple of quick tweaks that I change on the configuration of my device and I'll tell you why. Um, I don't use, out of the box, the config is going to give you a um, POV. Now, I don't need a POV because I have Track IR. Um, if you're using Track IR or um, a VR user, then you're not going to need that. So I just get rid of it because it's the very first configuration option you see here. You have a four-way POV. So what I'll do is just set that to disabled. And immediately it just rejigs the button count. And then I'm going to click save. Okay. Oh, we have to be second there. Right, so we're up there using 32 buttons. Next thing uh, I'll mention here is the axes. Now the brick lever is an analog um, device. So as I squeeze it, you'll see that little percentage going up and down. And to maintain compatibility to Warthog bases, uh, and there its brick lever is a digital one. So it's just on or off. And um, what happens is at a certain percentage, which is controlled by the software, it changes and triggers, it basically triggers a switch. I worked at mine's about 37%. So if I go to the button tab, button three is now active. So that would be what's transmitted to Windows. So that would be equivalent to the, you know, like a digital brake lever. Now, button three here is going to Windows button 31. This is what this mapping table is. So I don't want it triggering at 37%. I want triggering a bit less than that because I prefer a, a a shorter throw to trigger. Now I use my brake lever um, for a couple of different functions when I'm flying. So at about triggering about 10% or thereabouts, I want to trigger one button. And at a later far side uh, of the um, extreme would be maybe between 90 and 100% to trigger a different button. So I'm just gonna go through and set that up now. The first thing I wanna do is I wanna create an axis to button mapping. So 
the Axis 3, that is the one that is our gripper. So I'm going to set range from 10%, so between 10 and 80%. I want to activate button 33 because that's the first one we've got free in the list here. I'm, I'm guessing 30, yeah, 32 is the highest one listed. So we can create a axis to button binding at, at button 33. And then for the next one, it's going to be axis three and it's going to be from 90% to 100%. And I can use button 34 and go to the button tab. And it shows there, there, these new ones are configured now. Now I haven't saved this back to the device. Now already button three is going to trigger. I can't, I can't change the settings for button three, but I can remove it. Uh, make sure this is not ticked, by the way. So I'm going to set that to 33. So that's our first mapping we're changing. Save. So now, whenever 33 goes active, which is going to be between 10% and 80%, uh, then send button 31 to Windows. And then I'm going to add a new one here. And I'm going to put in button 34. And save. And then save it back to the device. So I'm going to get uh, the axis. It's still going to act as an analog axis, but it's going to trigger two different buttons. It's not going to trigger any button when it's not being depressed, but between 80% and 10%, it's going to trigger one button. And then 90 to 100, it's going to trigger another. If we bring up the VPC Joy Tester, select our device. I'll get rid of these because I don't need them. Now, I, when I grip it, 10%, 31 triggers. I take it forward. And at 80%, it goes off. And then I grip it more, 90%, 100, and then 33 goes on. So that gives me two buttons on that, that axis whenever I want to grip it. And that's basically how you do it. You can play with these different values in here to get percentages you like. It's up to you whether, whether or not you want to do it. This is just showing you why I'm tweaking myself for my own personal use. And the, if you double click on that axis, there's many, many more configuration options you can do here for each individual axis. Um, each individual axis has these this little setting tab here for the axis to uh, button bindings this one here is like a global one you just tell it what axis you're interested in and go for it the other ones are individually wired so there you go that's a couple of wee tweaks and uh hope you enjoy your virtual kit